That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Demonic, the fourth film directed by Neil Blomkamp, uh, which IFC Midnight is releasing August 20th, 2021. Uh, notably, it was filmed in secret in Canada over the pandemic last year. Interesting. I wonder why it was a secret. Because he's fanboy. He's a big deal, I guess. Uh you know, this is his first feature film since Chappie in 2015. Uh, that since then, he started his own studio and produced a number of and directed a number of shorts, including Raka. I know you've seen because Sigourney Weaver's in it. Um, that in hopes of generating interest to make any number of those features into. Uh, or any of those shorts into a feature like film, none of which happened. Also, notably, he was going to direct a new Alien film uh, starring Sigourney Weaver. Uh, of course, that died down mostly thanks to Ridley Scott purportedly and his Prometheus, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but so here we are. I think it, it sounded like after a lot of delayed projects, including a sequel to District 9, Blomkamp finally made another film, and this is what we have. It's about a mother-daughter, mm -hmm. a demon, the Vatican, mm -hmm. soldiers for Christ, and... Team Jesus. And uh, radiology technicians, I guess. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> so the basic story is there is a woman named Carly. Played by Carly Pope. She gets a text from a man named Martin mm -hmm. saying he wants to meet up with her. They meet up. He says, yeah, like, I got this call from some medical research place. They wanted me to come on down. And your mom was there. And Carly's kind of, like, blown away because she hasn't seen her mom in many, many, several many years. 20-ish years, yeah. Because her mom's been in prison, in and out of different prisons and mental, like, psych wards because her mom set a nursing home on fire and killed 26 people. So, she's like estranged from her mom, but decides to go to this place called Therapole to like see what's up. She goes, she's greeted by um, a doctor and a research scientist telling her that we've created this technology that basically will allow us to like, like transplant your consciousness into her subconscious, like her, like a dream state. And we're hoping you can communicate with her. Mm -hmm. But they kind of trick her because they're like, yeah, she keeps asking for you. And we're trying... They tell Carly, we're developing research to help with people who are in comas like your mom. All these things. And like, we want to make sure she's not in pain. We want to make sure she's comfortable. And the only way we can do that is if you go inside her mind and ask her. <laughs> so Carly does it with very little convincing. Pops into her mama's mind. Meets up with her. Like... And tells her, like, I just did this so I can tell you how much I fucking hate you. <laughs> and the mom's like, well, that's nice. Uh, I love you. Don't come back here. Like, for your own safety, don't do this again. So she gets out. And the, the doctor and the scientist are like, oh, for your first time, it's not too bad. And Carly's like, what do you mean my first time? Oh, you got to go back. We need more information. Mm -hmm. And don't you want to know why your mother killed all those people? Yeah. So they convince her by saying, like, well, don't you know why she killed all those people? Okay. To wrap it up, we find out that the mom is possessed with a demon. And she contracted this demon while she was at some sanitarium many years An ago. An abandoned TB sanitarium. Yeah. Okay. Martin, her friend, who she's also kind of estranged from... The reason he hasn't really communicated with her is because Martin also experienced this demon. So people who are near the person who's possessed by the demon, um, they start to see visions. Mm -hmm. And Martin had seen them. So unbeknownst to Carly, he has spent the last two decades researching this demon. So through a number of things, including Carly's friend Sam, who's this kind of like bubble, overly bubbly woman... Carly believes that this is true, that there's a demon that's possessing my mother. Martin explains all the things. And the we find out that the... Therapol. Therapol, this doctor and research... They're, they're not like... They're not independent researchers. They work for the Vatican. They, they are black ops... Black ops unit is how they're described. They're a black ops unit and they're, you know, controlled by the mm -hmm. Vatican... To go out here and like kill demons. So this is all a ruse to get this demon. So the gag is 
they needed Carly, the daughter, to go inside, the mom's name is Angela, mm-hmm. to go inside Angela's mind to find out where she contracted the demon. So we don't find out about the sanitarium until later, but it's required that they take the possessed to the site where they contracted the demon in order to exercise it. Mm-hmm. So they find out where the that it was a sanitarium. They take Angela there. And the demon jumps from Angela to the doctor. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor kills everyone except one person who's nearing death. But during that time, like, Carly's friend Sam is tripping because she's kind of seeing visions. She runs off into the woods somewhere. She tells... Carly and Martin, like, oh, your your mom, Angela, is over here in, like, these woods or something. So they decide to go back, and that's when they find out about the doctor being possessed. And then the, the final soldier, who's, like, about to die, says, hey, take this holy lance. Like, that's the only way to kill the demon, and you need to go back into, like, the dream state to find out where it is. Mm-hmm. And get your mom out. And get your mom out. So Carly does. Mom go, dies in the dream state. Mom dies in the dream state. Sam, the, the girlfriend, gets uh, burned up in a van somewhere. Um, and then the demon jumps from the doctor to Carly. Mm-hmm. So now the daughter's possessed, but she has the holy lance. So she stabs herself, which does eradicate the demon to hell, I guess. And there's no, like the demon in... Fallen, starring Denzel Washington, has no host around, so it must dissipate. A fiery death now. And the final scene is Carly waking up in the hospital because um, her wound didn't kill her. And then Martin shows up, basically like, let's be best friends again or let's date. I don't know. An, acquaint- an acquaint exchange about pudding. The, the end. Okay. This movie was very unsatisfying. It I is, was rolling my eyes so much. It is terribly written which is too bad because for the first like 15 to 20 minutes i was a little i was on board with it um and as you said when when carly first goes into her mother's dream state subconscious there were there were things that i liked about that i'm like oh this is an intriguing idea um you had brought up brandon cronenberg's possessor um i'd written down come true that recent oh yeah um or even this is a boring film starring Christy McNichol, but Dream Lover from Alan J. Pacula in the 80s um, is trying to kind of deal with similar ideas, but not in a very interesting way. Um, the first 15 minutes, I was not sold. I thought the... Because we meet Carly's friend Sam like pretty quickly, and I thought that lady's acting was very... She seemed like she thought she was like in a like ABC family sitcom. And it was distracting to it, me. It, that, yes, there were lots of crunchy bits there. But, but the, when we get to Therapole and we see the dream state or whatever they're in, that I thought was such a great idea. While I was waiting for it to unveil itself, there's enough items of interest. But it's it's ex- exactly at the moment where Carly goes back to Martin in his like little trailer that he lives in, his bunker that he lives in, and he explains the, about the Black Ops unit for the Vatican. I was like, oh, this is... This is out of control. It, it falls off a cliff, and it gets worse and worse. When the demon starts speaking through others, that's really bad. Yeah. I like to start things on fire. Where did you get that? Like, it's corny. The writings, yeah, because even when Carly Fritz first goes to Therapol, and she's like, what is this? And the doctor is explaining... Just like how he's explaining it is so crunchy. He's like, "This we develop technology that alleviates suffering." And she, okay, like <laughs> one of the worst scenes is with the friend Sam, who Carly comes home and Sam's like in her apartment. She's like, "How'd you get in here? You better leave. I'm not in the mood for you." And then, yes. and then this bitch comes back at three a.m. and Carly's like, like not perturbed to be woken up at this hour. And she's just but like, it turns out Sam is like kind of possessed yeah and she has like a little creepy moment but uh she, she like makes tea and she's like you're my best friend <laughs> one of the scientists at therapol who assists in putting carly into this dream state or whatever he's covered in tattoos which i thought was like oh that's really cool because they make it a point to say which i thought was also crunchy like he's a phd he has a double phd that was so dumb but I'm like, oh, that's cool that they're depicting this scientist who has a lot, as having a lot of tattoos. But then we find out he's really like a soldier. So I thought that was kind of corny. And when we see their little kit. They have like, yeah, like their tactical stuff is like this kit, you know, that 
like those industrial briefcases that have the padding inside to hold weaponry but instead of like firearms it's like a little portrait of the virgin mary and like i don't know some holy water and some rosary beads <laughs> also the so the actresses the the two the mother and daughter carly pope and natalie bolt who have both been in other blomkamp productions and like perif- very minor peripheral roles um natalie bolt is only seven years older uh, they, they look the same age but they explain it as in the memories we're getting from Angela like as a coping mechanism she automatically age regresses herself oh okay then let me take it back I mean that does make sense that yeah so never mind uh, it's I don't know there's the behaviors uh, uh, Carly Pope's character is written as like a teenage girl would act with these friends that she is estranged from from childhood and the way she's acting about her mother and like she she's mad at her mother because she was uh, ostracized by the townsfolk after what her mom yeah, did. Yeah, she and, hasn't spoken to her mom because she's mad that she was ostracized and it's like, girl, uh, I, I, I think your mom killing 26 people is enough to be mad. Like, <laughs> But I also agree. I think this actor and her friends are too old. To, when, cause because they, the one that's turning 38, yeah. they are too old. They needed to be at least at, at least 20 years younger, I think. She's like, my friend's door... And she goes to look for Sam, who's missing, and she files a report with the police. Or she tries to file a report, report with the police, and they're like, she's... We can't file a report yet. Like, you just reported it. She might come back tonight. Yeah, and like, she, don't, like, don't we... Like, don't all adults know that, you, like... You can't, like, missing adults have to be gone for a while. Right, you know? and then she goes to Martin's in anguish. She's like, the police won't file a report. Because, oh. The, she needed to be a teenager. Yeah. The way she was acting. Um, and then, her, like you said, her friends are acting like, like they're kids again. And actually, I forgot to look up, is Angela suffering from something called, called LIS, locked-in syndrome? No, oh, I don't is know that if that's a real thing. I don't I don't have any other notes. I just, this was a very unsatisfying experience because the initial idea of the you know the sort of like scientific approach to getting into this dream state and and then the actual visual of because it kind of looks like a 16-bit video game kind of i thought was very very interesting but then the soldiers for christ situation well, i just couldn't just <laughs> but it's it ends up being as stupid and generic as the title suggests demonic i i I don't know. I get. I understand that, you know, the constraints under which the film was made probably had a lot to do with it. But we're really getting down to it. The writing is not good. No. What would you give it? And you know, Carly Pope reminded me, and I think maybe I just have a bias. She reminded me of Kobe Smulders, who's an actress that maybe it's the name. I think I don't like the name Kobe. Uh, God. Just, just this generic white woman that's in these films. Uh, what would I give it? One out of five. I would give it one and a half, just because I thought the initial idea was interesting. Sure, but you know that's a log line, girl. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, either way, I don't think this is a good movie. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.